anything powerful positively can happen to you i would like you to just understand that a prepared man is better than a prepared message i want you to set yourself for what you're about to hear because it's never going to leave you on the same spot jesus said be careful how you hear so how you hear is as important as what you hear you're about to hear things that will transform your life forever if you pay careful attention. And we ask that God will give us the grace to pay careful attention in Jesus' name. Father, we've come this morning again to look at the wisdom of peak learning. Lord, we ask that you quicken our spirit and grant us the grace to become peak learners in the name of Jesus. Nobody on this platform will abuse grace in Jesus' name. At the end of the boot camp, people would wonder what they had been doing and they would take it so seriously that it would effect a transformation in their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The wisdom of peak learning. I remember this thing I'm about to say as clearly as yesterday. It was about nine years ago. I was in secondary school, and a young boy was in GSS1. He ran to a teacher who was his lesson teacher, who was my own subject teacher, and said, uncle, uncle, can't you see I'm improving? And the uncle was surprised. I didn't understand why he was surprised. He said, first test, I got two. Second test, I got three. And now I scored four. And the uncle opened his mouth and got it. And I was Surprised that the uncle was not excited with the young man until I realized that the first test was over 10, the second test was over 10, and the third test was over 20. So this young man was not improving. He was moving like a rocking chair. He was on the same spot. You see, the primary challenge of that boy is not just assimilated. It's because his target is his core, not the lessons, not, the, not to learn. And that is the difference between peak learners and people who just learn. You see, there are good students, excellent students, in fact, first class students who are not peak learners. But you can hardly find a peak learner who is unsuccessful. You can find excellent students who are not peak learners. But you can hardly find a peak learner who is not successful. So, we are in an age where we have unlimited access to knowledge up until 1450 the 15th century europe the whole of europe had just about 30,000 books then a miracle happened in 1450 the miracle of invention by a man called johann gutenberg in germany he invented the printing press and from that time between 1450 and 1500 the number of books in europe moved from 30,000 to about 9 million. Knowledge became like water. It became multiplied. You see, before then, people could have blamed the unavailability of information as a reason for their stagnation. But after then, it would be each person's personal responsibility. And what a wonderful age we are in. An age where we have traveled from the availability of books, um, from printing press to books everywhere, on your phone, on your computer, everywhere. It is now our personal responsibility to make the most of this um, age we are in. I'm just trying to see the time so I don't run past my time. So things to note, our objective in this teaching is, is half an hour for this teaching. Our objectives, I'm expected to end at 10.53. I'm saying the time just so I don't overshoot um, my time so everybody can keep me in check to stir up an unusual passion for knowledge to provide insight into the most effective ways to fall in love with reading to understand hindrances to becoming an addicted learner and ways to overcome them and also to understand the power of accountability in your quest for mastery so we'll be noting a few things before we proceed we'll be noting a few things before we proceed one until you learn to read consistently you cannot learn to read effectively. The second thing is, you are the same person today 
you will be five years from now apart from two things the books you read and the people you meet psalms chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 the scripture says blessed is the man that standeth that standeth not in the way of sinners nor walketh in the counsel of the ungodly nor sitteth in the seat of his comfort all of that can be summed up into one word association verse 2 says his delight is in the law of the lord information verse 3 says he will, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper that is all destiny hands of God. information and association reading is not learning it is a means to learning the first rung on the ladder of learning is an open mind a thirsty soul you see you cannot stop a thirsty soul from learning because they will learn from anything solomon looked at a lazy man and he learned he looked at a field overgrown with thorns and he drew lessons they will learn from anything so i trust that the reason why many of us have registered for this is because we are first and that first will be converted into results in this good camp by God's grace. The fourth thing is, he that does not read is not better than he who cannot read. You might as well not have the skill to read. Because there are people who genuinely want to read, but they cannot read. For instance, some of us have grandparents who will do anything, pay any price to be able to, to read English. And we can read English. And many of us are taking it for granted. But I trust that that is changing this time by God's grace. The solutions to all the challenges you presently face, all the challenges are hidden in books you have refused to read. They are all of the solutions, all, no matter the challenge, even death, the answer is hidden in words. The solution to all the challenges you presently face are hidden in books you have not yet read. I'll give us an example, Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday was just a normal, um, um, what, what do you call them? Low, low class, low class, middle class, and I think they were the a normal low class boy. But he happened upon an information. He was apprenticed to a bookbinder. And one day he came to an encyclopedia and he began to read an encyclopedia from A, from letter A. I think I'm getting the story wrong. I think it was letter E they brought to him. And he began to read everything from the beginning of letter E. And then when he got to electricity, he just kept going over and over and over again. And that was where the fire came from. And from there, the world can never recover from Michael Faraday. Because almost everything that people have done, your iPhones, your technology, everything comes from his groundwork. His groundwork in electricity. Almost all other inventions have their roots in what Michael Faraday did. The second example we are looking at is Benjamin Franklin. Now, Benjamin Franklin was a man who barely had primary school education. But like Michael Faraday as well, he was apprenticed to a bookbinder. And in his own case, he would fast and save his food money and use it to buy books and borrow books. And then he would walk by day, read by night because he had to return the books. And the result today is mind blowing. It is everywhere, everywhere. You cannot deny Benjamin Franklin almost in any nation of the earth. He invented what we call today weather forecast. That was a result of Franklin's thoughts. Early to bed, early to rise. Franklin's quote. Reading to plan. I mean, failing to plan is planning to fail. Is everywhere. Benjamin Franklin started what we know today as public libraries. Because of a test for knowledge. A test for knowledge. Now, who is a peak learner? A peak learner, like I said before, is somebody who has learned how to learn. Somebody who is not in school because they have to be in school. Somebody who is not reading a book because there is a demand upon them. There are people who cannot just sit still without learning. A peak learner is somebody who learns for the joy of learning and not because there is a certificate to earn. Somebody who, when they see an opportunity to learn, a joy wells up within their soul that is inexplicable. And finally, a peak learner is someone to whom a destination in learning does not exist. Learning never ends for them. A peak learner does not learn for, see, they get their PhD and then stop learning, or they get a certain degree. Several people are in school and they cannot just wait to leave school because they are tired of learning. They have the skill to read but they don't have the will to read. 
And without the will to read, there can be no will to live. So having known who a peak learner is, why should we be peak learners? Why should we be peak learners? To so stay fired up. I think this is one of the most important reasons. When you find somebody who is a peak learner, they need no motivation to do anything. They, they are permanently motivated. Their frequency is inexplicable. I'll give us two examples. One is somebody in the, in the scriptures. He was so motivated that even when people thought he was dead, he stood up and continued working. Apostle Paul. Paul was so motivated. The scripture does not tell us that Paul's secret was prayer, although he was a prayer machine. Paul was an addicted learner. He said, the books I left, bring them for me, especially my notes. So it was not just reading. It was reading and taking notes. It will just keep you going. When others are saying we are tired, they are saying we want to go again. We know great men who you just wonder their, where their energy is coming from. It's coming from the ability to be a peak learner. If you can become a peak learner, you will be surprised. You will be surprised at how fired up you will be. You will need no encouragement to do anything because the knowledge itself provides you inspiration. You see, peak learning is like this hot air balloon many of us can see on our screen. It provides that fire. As long as that fire is burning, that balloon cannot land. You have to regulate the fire to bring it to a landing space. As long as they keep the fire of learning burning within them, they will keep floating. And that is why they need no encouragement. Why should you be a big learner? Possibility thinking. Possibility thinking. And how big learning does this to you is that it changes your state. You see, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. When water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, something happens. It stops being water. It changes state. When you get to that level in learning, when you become a peak learner, you change states. You stop seeing things like everybody else. You evaporate practically like water. Because what learning does to you is that it commonizes your problem. That thing that people are saying, hey, this is issue, this issue. But because you have read about 20 people who had the same issues, you just see it as this is not how they did it. And you apply yourself to it. Possibility thinking. A transformed mindset. A transformed mindset. A transformed mindset. This is so powerful. So powerful. You know, it was James Allen that said, men imagine that thoughts can be kept secret. But can you really hide your thoughts? You can't. Because sooner or later, your reality will catch up with your thoughts and people will know what you are thinking. Everywhere everybody is today is a function of our thoughts. Everywhere we are today. So you cannot really hide your thoughts. I remember about 19 months ago, I used to work in the warehouse. And one day I was trying to tell my younger brother something while we were working in that warehouse together. And I desired strongly to get into the profession I already took a course for, HR. And I was speaking to him and he could not hear me because the warehouse is quite a noisy environment. And he said, I can't hear you, brother. Speak up. I said, the problem is not that you can't hear me. The challenge is that I'm in the wrong environment. My mind had, had left the warehouse in my room. And because my mind had left, my body had to follow. That is what learning can do to you. Why should you be a peak learner? Leadership opportunities. I said earlier on, you cannot hide a CEO material in a gatehouse infected. By the time he speaks for two minutes, you take him out of it. You cannot hide the pastor material in an ushering clothing for too long. The leadership, you know, leadership is something that cannot be hidden. It's seen in words, it's seen in character, although it is almost intangible. When people go to school to study leadership, sometimes it's quite, um, it's not exactly something you can study because it's a life. And what um, reading does to you, what learning does to you, is it brings out that potential. And people are able to see clearly that this person is a leader. This person is a leader. Now, why should you be a peak learner? Why should you be a peak learner? Death and wisdom. Quality thoughts. Death and wisdom. I had a man of God say that if you read one book every week, 
at the end of the year you would have read 52 books in five years you would have read 250 about 250 books plus he said by the time you speak every sentence you say will drop like a bomb the, the statement took me and it was not because of that statement i started reading but because i noticed that i had been on that frequency for a while i knew what i was going to expect in a few years time because you can only say what you are thinking and by reading at that level by reading at that frequency you are charging your mind with positive thoughts continuously consistently and almost permanently so there is no way when you speak people will not listen i will give us an example here the man called job job said after i spoke nobody spoke to me he said they laid their, their hands on their lips when i he was dead he was not just speaking anyhow it was because when he spoke it was too deep for you to speak anything else somebody were asked to write in a card at work one day and someone wrote in the card and then someone saw it and then she was to write in the card because she saw the depth of what the person wrote in the card what she just wrote on the card is what he said that is what it means to keep quiet when somebody has finished speaking because of depth quality results on common sense common sense can only make you a common man you need uncommon sense to get uncommon results and because to get uncommon sense you have to do what common men will not do somebody said why not one book a month well you can do one book a month but then if the degree of results you are looking for is at the level that you want it to be uncommon you have to do what everybody is not necessarily do. quality results quality results how to become a peak learner now, this is the very important part. How to is very, 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 very important. And I will tell us why. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. It says, um, the way of the foolish, one person, every, the labor of the foolish, every one of them. One person walking, everybody getting tired. Because he knows the city. He knows he wants to go to the city. He does not know how to. Somebody shared with me recently, she just got into 100 level. She said, I want to make a first class. I don't know how to, but I will make a first class. I said, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I was in your situation. I wanted the first class. I didn't know how to. And I did not make a first class. Because you don't make a first class by wanting to. You do by knowing how to and applying yourself to the house. So how do you become a peak learner? You read what you love until you love to read. Except fiction. Because fiction is like... I don't want to, to be very harsh with words, but fiction leaves nothing of value most of the times in the mind, apart from staring you up like you need. So read what you love, productive. If the only thing you love to read about for now is success, stay there till the desire comes. If it is only spirituality, stay there. If the only thing you love to read about for now is a trait, stay there till the desire to read comes. When the desire comes, you realize almost anything will begin to pique your interest work with, re with, with readers i cannot overemphasize working with readers maybe because this was one of the things that helped me in my final year i was going home when i spoke to the first class student in university then uh, my result in, in university was not the best um, and then he said something that got me think for a very long time he was studying biochemistry he probably never knew the impact that statement made me he said Sometimes, even when I have headache, I still have to force myself to read for four hours. And I was there thinking, without headache, I have to force myself to read for one hour. And that statement really, because I began to work with him as he poured into me, he began to tear something in me. I went on for that vacation. And for the first time in my life, I began to read before the day broke. And I was still reading after the day closed up. Because it, it really charged me up. You don't know the impact association can have for you. I said once, what is the business of a fisherman with having a book in Bible, if not by association? Association will revolutionize anybody's life. Anybody's life. And you don't need to connect to people at the top. A lot of people are just trying to find somebody who you can have access to. Because people at the top, it will be a struggle. By the time you have chased them for, for a, a lot of time that you could have invested, you realize that you could have done better things with that. Find somebody you have access to and work, join hard with the person. The scripture says, a man, 
I, I think his name was Jason, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. Join hard. You know what it means to join hard. Oh goodness. Whatever it costs, if it costs you a chunk of your salary to visit the person consistently, join hard with the person. And you'll be surprised that you just catch the fire naturally. Because when the fire is lit somewhere in the Stone Age, it is foolishness to begin to strike stone again for half a day when you can easily take a wood there and catch fire. Many of us have come here because we want to work with us. And that result will show itself in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay? Remain humble. How to become a peak learner. Remain humble. That's open affair. I read Coach John Wooden's difference between ignorance and arrogance. Ignorance is not knowing what to do. Um, it's not learning. It's obviously ignorance is something we all know. Arrogance, he said, it is when you assume that you can get the results you got the last time without putting in the exact same work. And that's the result of pride. You think, well, I've done it before. And this is why people's results begin to drop. You assume that, yes, I was going to go that result. And you do not remember the sacrifices you paid. It's called arrogance. The Bible gave us one very thorough warning about knowledge. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. It says, knowledge forfeit up. That knowledge will make you swell. You know it now. You can walk with your shoulders up. You need to fight it with everything because the moment the cup is full, nothing goes in again. No, nothing goes in again. So you need to consistently empty yourself and remain humble. Understand the power of focus. Understand the power of focus. You see, your attention is the most valuable commodity on earth. Companies are making billions of dollars and pounds out of people's attention. Why are you on Instagram? They are buying your attention. All social media apps, what they are looking for is your attention. The devil is looking for your attention. In fact, even God cannot do anything to a man without attention. Guard your attention in the right direction because whatever you pay attention to will give you direction. Anything you pay attention to. So when you are reading, focus. Pay attention to the book. When you are reading with divided focus, it's a waste of time most of the time. You will notice when you begin to read, sometimes not until 15 minutes in, you won't begin to see anything. It's because your focus is climbing up gradually until it gets to the height when you can soar. Avoid prodigality of time. Benjamin Franklin said, prodigality of time produces poverty of mind as well as of estate. If you waste time, you will be poor in mind and poor in wealth. That's the meaning. Avoid, avoid it like a plague. There are days I wake up, I think I shared that yesterday. Any day I'm up work and I wake up, one of my deepest prayers used to be, God, please, help me to not waste one minute. Because you will just want to reply a WhatsApp message. Before you know, you have been checking statuses for 35 minutes. It, it's very, our, our generation needs to protect our time with everything we have. Because so many things now are out there. But how many times have you gone on YouTube to go and look for how to do something? And you ended up <laughs> spending hours, hours there. Avoid aimless learning. This is to protect your growth. Because aimless learning can easily land you where you don't want to get to. The world is in trouble with that today because Charles Darwin was an aimless learner. He was in seminary to become a medical and to become a pastor, to become a priest. And he came across a small book. Today, the world has not recovered from the impact. The, the Western world is so confused about where they come from. Something they are from monkeys, something they are from Big Bang. Because of one man's endless learning. Just be focused. Know what you want before you dive into learning. Keep a record. I, I actually put this here so I won't forget. Keep, if there's one thing that has kept me going, it is records. And recently, I knew I was not keeping record when I saw Oswald J. Smith at the age of 70-something, right? I have now print, preached my 12,000 sermon. All of them. And I have a record of all of them. He shook me to my bones. If a man can keep record of all his sermon from number one to 12,000, I've not started. Keep records. Very important. I started this. This is probably the greatest thing that has kept me doing. And I'll show it to us. I've, I've always shown it in the good camp. This is the record of when I started reading in 2017. You would see, I, I won't be able to, I'll try my best to make us see it. But I think, we might post it on the platform. 
I keep a record of the title of the book, the author, the number of pages, the day started and date finished. From, page, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. At the end of the year, I'm not thinking of the number of books I've read. I know when I'm reading them. This was how I started in 2017. In 2018, I continued the same way. Although the books were rough, I was not getting the idea, but I knew that I was keeping the records. In 2019, it improved. And then the books were getting it even though I was keeping records on them. And it was just records. And then 2020 was there as well. And in 2021, for some, I can't find the 2021 for some reason, but I have the picture. I introduced something. What did I really learn from this? What's the one thing that stood out to me that I would like? And I began to write that down. I either write that or write what I want to learn before I start or do both. And it's because what keeps you going most times is not this teaching you are hearing. It's not what anybody else will say. It's not what any powerful or insightful person will see. It's the consciousness of the fact that you are making progress. That is more motivation than anything anybody can tell you. Because that thing you are seeing on paper is you preaching to yourself. Be accountable. Be accountable. Be accountable. Accountability is, is very powerful. And that is the entire... Um, if you, if you want to say trade, whatever, trade secret of we to live here, everything we to be dispute around is accountability. Accountability keeps you on course. It keeps you on course. You will notice the reason why they always ask planes to connect to their control tower is because they can guide them. It's accountability. It keeps you on course. It sets you up for success. Because when you are accountable, you know that you are not the only one now. There are people watching over your shoulders. And it puts more pressure on you. That is positive peer pressure. That's the kind of peer pressure we should be going for. Accountability saves you from avoidable mistakes and provides damage control. It, it just helps you. Accountability is going to somebody and saying, here is the key to my, um, to my life. In case I lock the door on myself inside, take the spare key. So when you make mistakes, somebody will be able to call you to order. You will notice people who are not accountable when they make mistakes, most of the times they are drunk because nobody can call them to order. I gave an example, and I'm very conscious of time now. I gave an example uh, in the last post camp. You see Moses, Solomon, and David, very wonderful great men in scriptures. Moses had parted the Red Sea, had turned rod into snake, had turned river into blood, yet he was so humble that he was accountable to Jethro. Jethro said, this thing you are doing, if you don't change it, you will, um, you will just kill yourself. And he listened. He did not say, have you used headaches before? He was accountable. Now, David committed adultery, committed murder. For the moment Nathan said to him, you are the one who has offended God. He repented. Or is he Solomon the wisest of all? Nobody could talk to Solomon. And Solomon went like that until he crashed. If Solomon was accountable, I'm sure at some point he would have retraced his steps. Accountability provides damage control. Accountability gives you an unusual head start. Somebody who is accountable, usually to people who have gone ahead or to somebody they are running together, the, the force of accountability pushes you further than others. And that is what you should do at this boot camp. Leverage on that force. As soon as we start, start very strong. This is the first of July. What a wonderful day to be at this meeting. Start very strong. Like, start as if this second half is only your business. And you'll be surprised. Counsel. Now, this is the end of the teaching because I've deliberately put this here. If you are facing a particular challenge, you can use this platform to find the solution. Gather at least four books on proven authors that address the situation and deal with it. Now, I'm saying this. We have a recording on that from the last platform, The Power of Light just about 25 minutes teaching is on the youtube channel i'm saying this because many people read about two books on a particular situation and when they don't find solution they begin to to bemoan their situation and saying i've done everything i know to do but have you ever wondered that if you go into a room with your phone's flashlight there are still places with darkness the, your phone's flashlight can only light so wild an area do you see that and begin to say this darkness will not just go away I don't, I don't know what's wrong with this darkness. No, you look for more light. 
if the situation has refused to be, go and get light until you force the devil out. I read of a person, he steered me up so much. I don't know if it was fruit of the womb or it was a particular, I know it was related with health. He read until he read 17 books back to back on that issue. The devil had to run. 17 books on one issue. The devil had to pack. So use this boot camp to steer yourself up. So I have come to the practical session. I would like us to do something we've not done before in any boot camp. Wow, I was one minute behind schedule. I want us to lift up our voices and ask for the grace. The grace. Ask God. If you if you're not a Christian, whatever you know works for you. Pray for the grace to apply yourself to these things you have just heard. You will not just be steered up. 